U.S. inflation fell to 3% in June. That's its largest slowdown in more than two years, down from 4% the month before. This is a huge win for Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve, who've been raising interest rates to tamper inflation since the beginning of 2022. This time last year, we were looking at more than 9% inflation. Still, inflation has not yet reached the Fed's target rate of 2%. Plus, core inflation, which doesn't include volatile food and energy costs, is proving stickier. Prices are up 4.8% from a year ago. The Fed paused rate hikes at its last meeting in June, but it's made clear that there will be further increases before the end of the year. Scott, what's your reaction to the inflation news? I think Time's person of the year will either be Zelensky or Sam Altman. Maybe it already was Zelensky. I don't know, but um, it should be Jerome Powell. It should be Chairman Powell. Yeah. I, I think he's been an extraordinary leader. Everyone was second guessing him. People going on CNBC who had interest rate sensitive businesses saying he was creating the Weimar Republic. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, this is a direct result of an increase in Elizabeth Warren, you know, Senator Warren, you know, going crazy about the increase in interest rates have resulted in, I mean, it, this guy's come under huge pressure and he's just been steadfast. Mm -hmm. And now our inflation is the lowest, I think, of any OECD country. Yeah. And the, there's just not getting around it. When you have a lot of inflation, wages don't keep up with it and people's quality of life goes way down. And he has been steadfast, and he's just ignored all the noise, looks at the data, and says, yeah, banks failing is bad. Yeah, people's mortgages and credit card bills going up is bad. Mm -hmm. You know, no doubt. There's, you know, this is a, a bad decision between bad decisions. But he's like, the worst isn't runaway inflation. You can – inflation is one of those things. Once it gets out of control, it is out of your control. And it's how a society and an economy can literally collapse. And he said, you know, not on my watch, girlfriend. And he implemented a series of exceptionally unprecedented and exceptionally painful interest rate increases. And it looks as if it's worked. And it's not all him. I think there's certain deflationary features. The yep. supply chain is getting ungunked. I think even, even AI is probably responsible for some deflationary forces. As I think the layoffs in big tech and the prospect of AI has probably made some people not quite as confident in their salary negotiations. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a huge victory. And as usual, it prompts the following question. If you don't think the American economy is strong, where would you rather be? And so we're bringing inflation down, but we have historically low unemployment. I mean, okay, that's pretty much the Goldilocks economy right now. So yeah. I think it's amazing. You included that. Uh, and the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach area has a 9% inflation rate, more than double the national average. I think that's because you and Claire had my credit card at the strip club 11. <laughs> I think that is, I think that's what's going that's on hard. here. That's yeah. easy two points of that nine points. <laughs> um, but look, I think this is, I think this is a huge victory for the U.S. Yeah. and for, and for Chairman Powell. Yeah. 100%. I mean, you think back to the conversations that we had a few months ago where we had all of this doomerism around hyperinflation. So Jack Dorsey put out a tweet. He said, hyperinflation is going to change everything. It's happening. And then we also discussed that Balaji Srinivasan bet where he bet a million dollars in March that the US would enter hyperinflation within the next 90 days. Um, I just I looked up the, the definition of hyperinflation. This is what these people were predicting. Quote, Rapid, excessive, out-of-control price increases, usually exceeding 50% per month or 1,000% per year. And we were taking this stuff seriously. And once again, the catastrophists and the doomerists have been proven wrong. And I guess the thing that I'm feeling on this news is I hope that we remember this moment and that we mark this moment because next time, I mean, th there's going to be another period of relative instability compared to the past compared to other nations. And I just, I, when everyone starts shouting that the Fed is corrupt and that people like Jerome Powell don't know what they're doing, they're sort of these bureaucratic idiots who are clouded by their bureaucratic backgrounds or whatever it is that makes people distrust these people. I, I just, I hope we remember that the safest, most sensible bet is almost always to trust the experts in the US government. It's like, it's just, it's the best bet that you're going to make. It's a sure way to prevent yourself from either losing a lot of money or looking really stupid. And it, it's happened once again, but I can, I'll bet that we won't mark this moment with enough appreciation for the fact that in, in the face of 
all of that sentiment, all of that anger and criticism, he, yeah, like you said, he, 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 was, he held steady. And he believed in what he believed. And it was a mainstream macroeconomic theory, but it worked. So I, I, I hope we remember this. Well, most importantly, let's bring this back to daddy. And when I say daddy, I mean Prof G. What was my prediction about inflation? And I think we're going to see inflation come down almost as fast as it went up. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> that it was going to come down as, as fast as it had gone up. Yep. Inflation is too many dollars facing too few products. The Fed was going to decrease the number of dollars out there. We were going to run out of stimulus money. Yeah. And China and supply chain was going to get ungunked, and we were going to see a crash in inflation, and that's what's happened. So yeah. I, I, think this is, I think this is great. Um, the dollar has come down, which is probably a good thing, you know, depending on what side you are. It probably helps in terms of our export economy. Yeah. And I'm just, again, I, I, think, I think we're right to question government and we're able to do that at the ballot box and our you know, f free speech and uh, our great journalistic infrastructure does a pretty good job of keeping government sort of in check, sort mm -hmm. of. Yeah. And the government gets it wrong all the time. But I find generally the people, you know, Janet Yellen, uh, Chairman Powell, or Secretary Yellen, the people in government are generally some of the most talented, hardest working people. And we at some point need to bust out of this 40 year scourge or, or, or screed or whatever the term is against government started yeah. by Thatcher and Reagan that, that, you know, by virtue of being in government major in common, it's just not true. And all yeah. the, all the people going on CNBC saying we need to bring interest rates down who were funding huge projects that no longer made sense in an economy where you couldn't get free money, uh, were wrong. And all these, uh, yeah. Anyways, I, I'm, um, I'm very happy. Chairman Powell, Chairman Powell. I hope he's the man. I hope he's Times Person of the Year. That would be probably the best, uh, the best decision. And we are not Weimar Republic. We are not the Weimar Republic. We're the Weimaraner Republic, as in awesome. Weimaraners are awesome. Ed, have you ever seen a Weimaraner? Do they have those in the is. UK? A Weimaraner. Uh, as made famous by, I think his name was William Wegman. Uh, I actually have. My first piece of art was given to me by a friend of mine who I worked with at Profit Brand Strategy. And it was a photograph of a, he took all these photographs of Weimaraners. And they are arguably the most beautiful dog in the world, maybe with the exception mm -hmm. of a Vishla. But they are these beautiful gray hounds, but not greyhound, they're gray. Are they hounds? I think they're hounds. And they're the most gorgeous kind of mid-sized dog. And they're this incredible gray color. And this photographer just took pictures of uh, Weimaraners. Anyways, I don't know how I got here, but we <laughs> yeah. are the Weimaraner Republic, as in we are the awesome democracy <laughs> experiment country. I'm, I'm very excited about this inflation number coming down. Is it, it also a, means I you, need to pay you less. It means I need to pay you less. No, I, I don't just know about keep that. that in mind. Keep that in mind. <laughs> are you chalking mind. this up as a W? Like, are we well, out we'll of the see. woods? No. Okay. I mean, you could, you could see it rip back. You don't. Okay. You don't want to, we don't want to declare victory. Plus their target, I think is like two, two and a half percent. Yeah, two percent. And some of it was, I guess the biggest factor was rents. Rents have come down. Yeah. Uh, which was shocking. Um, but they've um, slowed down. Or they've but, slowed down. Is yeah, that yeah. what it is? Yeah. But if you look at air travel, it, it, weirdly, it's down eight percent, like a, a literal decrease, hmm. which is, I can't really understand because I feel like air travel has been ripping recently. I wonder if people are running out of money. Supposedly, there was about a trillion dollars of stimulus left, and consumers were ripping through about a hundred billion a month, meaning mm -hmm. that the the end of the party, the lights were starting to come on. It's like when they play. When I used to go out to clubs in t the two thousands, I used to do it a lot, Ed. I used to go out a lot. I used to go out a lot, I've and heard. I'd walk in, <laughs> and I'd get shitty drunk because I'm a lot more confident, a lot more likable when I'm drunk, and and uh, at the end of the night, you know, two a.m. whenever it was closing. 4 a.m. They always play. <laughs> they always play. Come on, Eileen. That was their way of saying get out. They start get playing out. bad, bad 80s music, and this feels like. <laughs> yeah, this feels. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully this is the end. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this is the end of inflation. 